Okay, today I'm going to be doing one of the simplest yet coolest experiments I've ever done. So I'm going to be flying a drone in a closed box on a scale. And the question is, when the drone takes off, will the box weigh less? So I'll try it with a completely enclosed box, and then I'll try it with the lid off the box, and then I'll just try it with a big glass plate. No sides, no top. And we'll see if the weight changes on the scale in all of those situations. So why don't you make your guess right now in the comments section on what you think will happen with a closed box, a box without a lid, and just a glass plate. Will the weight go up or down or stay the same on each of the cases? And then after we see what happens, let's talk about why it happens. Okay, so first let's do a completely enclosed box. Okay, so I have my drone in the Tupperware box here. I've zeroed it out right now. So let's see what happens when I lift the drone up. So if I lift it up, it weighs 21 grams less. Set it back down, back to zero. So this drone weighs around 21 grams. So the question is, when I fly it with the lid on, what will the scale go to? Will it go to minus 21, stay at zero, or something in between? Let's see what happens. Okay, we're at zero. Okay, let's see what the scale says when I take off. Three, two, one. <laughs> it's staying right at, right at zero. Doesn't really matter what I do, it just stays right at zero. Okay, so that just stayed right at zero. No matter what I did, bump the sides, do whatever I want, no matter how high or low it was flying, it stayed right at zero. So, were you right on what would happen on that? At the end of all three experiments, I'll explain why that happened. But for now, let's try it without the lid. Okay, there's no lid on here now. Let's see what happens on the scale. Okay, drone in a box with no lid. Three, two, one. So it still say so it still stays pretty close to zero. Oh, I left the box and it jumped down to negative 20 grams, just as you'd expect. But put it back in, and right at zero again. So it looks like the lid does not matter really at all. Okay, now with no sides at all, let's see what happens. Okay, we're zeroed, let's give it a fly. Okay, here we go. Zero. Zero. <laughs> That's crazy, it doesn't even need sides or a lid. So what's crazy is if I catch it in the air and turn it off, the weight returns. But when I turn it on and then let it go, it goes back to zero. <laughs> Anytime I fly off the edge, the weight returns. And what's even more interesting is if I hold it here and then turn on the blades full blast, meaning that they're full throttle so that it would have just shot to the ceiling, so it's raising in the air, not just hovering. You'll see that the weight now goes in the positive. So now it's positive nine grams. So when I throttle down, it's right at zero. So that should be just hovering. And it is. And if I throttle less, the weight gets less and less and less. 
and goes back to the original weight. So now let's do a bigger drone on just this glass plate here and see if we see the same effect. Okay, so I have it zeroed right now. If I lift the drone off, 743 grams lighter. So it didn't quite stay at zero, it was about 20 grams off, but that's because in order for the scale to feel all the weight of the air, it has to be collecting all the air that's moving down. But because the drone is so big, some of the entrapped air is hitting the ground and not this glass plate here, and so it doesn't exactly feel all the weight. But for the most part, it did feel most of the weight of the drone. So the reason this is happening is because if you just think about the forces involved, in order for something to not move, the downward force and the upward force have to be equal. And so if a drone's going to hover in place, it has to have, it already has a downward force pulling down on it. And I'm going to call the force in grams, even though that's mass, but because I'm using a scale, I'm going to act like that's a force. So it has 21 grams of force pulling down on it. So it needs 21 grams of force pushing up on it. And the way it does that is it throws air downwards. So it's throwing the equivalent of 21 grams of air downwards all the time so that it stays in the same spot. This is true for a drone. This is also true for a full scale helicopter even. It's easy to understand for propeller based systems like this because you can picture it throwing the air downward and pushing against the scale. What's a little harder to picture is what happens with planes. So although I can't do the real experiment, what would happen if there were a plane taking off on the scale and it took off and it started flying? Would the scale increase, decrease, or stay the same? So what would actually happen is exactly what happened with the drone, is the scale would stay exactly the same. Because even planes throw air downwards. Their wings and their angle of attack are such that it throws air downward, just like the propellers of a drone or a helicopter. And you can notice this when a plane goes through a cloud, you can see a downward draft behind the wings. And so for a huge Boeing 747, it has to throw a tremendous amount of air downward, equivalent to the weight of that entire airplane. So you can picture flying objects as just big air throwers. They have to continually throw air downward in order to stay buoyant in the air. So this video was sponsored by Brilliant.org. So I have this YouTube channel, but by trade I'm a chemical engineer. And the reason I pursued my education is because I love science. I was always searching for fun and exciting ways to challenge my mind and things to do to develop my skills in science. So when I explored Brilliant.org, my immediate reaction was that I wished it was around when I was younger. So you get to challenge your mind through the guided problem solving courses they have on there based on math, science, and engineering. So if you want to learn more about what you watch today, they have a really cool module called the Ply to the Fly. So this module further helps you understand what happens when the drone lands, and it also has interactive puzzles to help you explore all kinds of thought experiments in physics, which complement the actual experiments of the things that you're watching on my channel. So if you like my channel, you'll love Brilliant. It's so much fun. I put the link in my description for Brilliant.org. You can go check it out and sign up for free. But also to support the Action Lab and learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org backslash the Action Lab to get the premium subscription. The first 200 people to click the link in my description will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go check it out. So thanks for watching everyone. I'd like to know how many of you got all three of those questions right. And if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. Or if you have any suggestions for me to do in the future, also let me know. And if you're not my subscriber yet, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out, and I'll see you next time.